is Tuesday, June 26th, and I'm your host, Paula Hersey. On today's show, we get our weekly check-in with Chief Sonneben, airport managers do a flyby, and three polling venues are on the move. First, a look at today's weather, a picture-perfect day, mostly sunny, pleasant, highs in the lower and middle 70s, variable winds becoming south 10 to 15 miles per hour. Let's start with some news you can use. This recycling notice has just come in. Due to changes in the global recycling markets, the Transfer Station and Recycling Center will be adjusting the operations in response to the changes. Effective July 1, 2018, residents will be required to separate aluminum and tin in their recycling and place them in the cans-only recycling containers, similar to the way that corrugated cardboard is already separated. New signs will be placed to help with this change. The town appreciates your cooperation and help to keep transfer stations costs as low as possible for our customers. Live with us on the phone, Chief Sonneben. Live on the phone with us, Chief Sonneben, with some high notes and some low notes for the weekend. <laughs> Let's start with a low note, an interloper and theft at a charity event. Yeah, I mean, uh, I, I, don't even know, I don't even know where to go with that, but I, one of the, I guess it happens, you know, mm. you, it's why we can't have nice things, I suppose. Mm. Um, but apparently, you know, they were having a, um, over the weekend they were having a, uh, a fundraiser next door at the Cape Codder Resort uh, for uh, Sergeant Gannon. Uh, Yarmouth PD and some other groups were gathered, and they were having an auction, some a silent auction, some items. And you know, everyone was generally having a good time and hanging out, raising money uh, for a good cause. And about 10:30, uh, we got a call. To 10:30 p.m., we got a call to head over there uh, for a report of a larceny. So we got over there, the officers started investigating, started asking some questions, and it turned out that one of the auction items um, had been wrapped up and was sitting on a table for people to bid on and went missing. Uh, no one really knew what happened to it, so are uh, the officers that went over there started uh, working with Cape Cotter Security, and thank goodness they have uh, a pretty good surveillance system over there, and they were able to review the tapes, and um, through reviewing the tapes, they were able to um, see what happened and identify a person, um, which led officers over to an address in Hyannis and a 56-year-old woman named Maureen Wigan. Um, the officers spoke to her there at a residence, and um, she gave statements that were contra say contradictory to what was observable on the video, uh, saying she was never there at first and stuff like that, in which plainly uh, the video evidence 
was in stark contrast to that. And then eventually, I guess she said that she was had had been in the parking lot and spoke briefly with Chief Fredrickson. Well, eventually she did admit that she was there, and the item said the item was in her car. The item was recovered and brought back to the auction, where it did find its way to the person that had bid on it. Um, right now, uh, the case is pending over at court, and she'll be processed over there and taken care of by the judicial system, and we'll see where it goes next. My goodness, that's just rotten. Ah, yeah, you know, I mean... I don't know. I don't even know where I don't even know what to say about it, but it is what I, it is. <laughs> I don't know. You know, you try and have a nice event and right. I guess somebody's got to come along, but you know, it just goes to show you. I mean, you go you're at a place full of cops and still something 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 can happen. Exactly. You yeah. Know? So let's go to the high note cuz that's way more better of the weekend. Uh Friday night was the Harbor Hawks first responder appreciation night. Uh I saw you there uh pretending to be a baseball player. Uh yeah, I, I don't know if I pulled it off, but uh Chief Fredrickson and I were there. We got to throw out the first pitch. I was I think that was awesome. That we it was pretty cool, you know. Um they also had uh the canines were there. We had uh our canine our two canines were there. Um, Officer Jackson and Officer Fulham were there with their dogs, Vonnie and Rocco. Um, uh, Vonnie did a um, drug de drug detection um, scenario uh, with people, and Rocco ch uh, chased and apprehended a fleeing subject, uh, which was Officer Fulham dressed up in a bite suit. Uh, we also had Officer Martin from the Sheriff's Department and Lieutenant Roderick from the Sheriff's Department were also there. Uh, Lieutenant Roderick's dog um, was there doing drug demonstrations as well on packages to show how dogs can detect smells from coming from packages, you know, so they can go to like different places like, you know, steamship authorities, bus terminals, and different places and find things much more swiftly than we could by opening every bag there. The dogs can just smell it and find it. And Officer Martin's dog also showed um, how swift it was by catching a fleeing officer full of also wearing the bite suit again. Um, Officer Fulham, thanks for doing that. You had ex <laughs> showed extreme grace by getting bitten by two different dogs that evening, and everything went well. There were a lot of kids. The kids seemed to enjoy it. Uh, there were a couple of the – and they also had Nero was there, came down. Nero appears to be doing really well. He was there with Officer retired Officer McClellan from the Yarmouth PD. Um, Nero was also out on the mound for the first pitch, and he – they did award him with a game ball that he could chew on and play with. Um, maybe maybe we should auction that off. Maybe that, should, <laughs> maybe that could do something for us. And um, also there, the, we got to see a couple of the stuffed Neros that Yarmouth PD has had and is, are available through the Yarmouth PD to help raise funds for the Fallen Officer Fund and everything else like that. But overall, it was a great time, and Hyannis won. They did. Um, one of the things that I noticed there that it, it wasn't just all about Barnstable PD. Nope. It was all first responders, and yep. uh, you had some hardware there too, huh? Yep, we had. Well, we had the, the fire, uh, highest fire department brought the big ladder truck with the flag. Uh, thanks to Deputy Chief Melanson for getting that down there, and we also had uh, you know a cruiser that was there on display. We had our command post that was down there on display for people to walk through and take a look at. And we had the Bearcat, which um, really isn't ours. It is a regional asset that the Law Enforcement Council, the Cape Cod Law Enforcement Council, purchased and is available to members of the Law Enforcement Council down here for use in situations where it might not be safe for an officer or first responders to approach a violent scene or something else like that. It also has some equipment on there like Flare, which is a forward-looking infrared to help locate people that may be out in the dark and everything else like that. And we had Detective Connolly down there with our drone. You probably mm -hmm. heard it buzzing around overhead, uh, which, we use, which we have used to some great, great success thanks to the Blue Coats of Barnstable. <clears throat> We've gotten that out there, and it has helped find missing people. It has helped find uh, subjects hiding from the police. And um, it has also helped us with search warrant services and things like that. So when officers don't have to go out and necessarily put themselves at risk conducting surveillance. The drone can be up high where people can't see or hear it, and it can conduct that surveillance for us to keep officers safe. Excellent. It was a wonderful evening. I hope you're icing up that arm. <laughs>
Yeah, I got on my I'm on my uh, couple of days rest. There, I'm going to be getting back in the rotation here in a couple of days. Excellent. Well, <laughs> uh, sit in that big chair, and uh, we'll talk to you next week. All right. Thanks. Have a great day. You too. Bye. As one airport manager taxis off the runway into retirement, a new airport manager reflects on lessons on the tarmac. Roland Bud Brolt is in his last week at the Barnstable Municipal Airport, and Katie Service will be pulling the rudder on the airport operations into the future. Well, I came to the airport from the Department of Public Works where I was the assistant director working for Mark Ells, who was the director at the time. And uh, I had just completed a number of construction projects for the Department of Public Works. And uh, so I, and then my pri prior job to that, I was in Truro, where I'd done a number of public construction projects. And so when this airport position opened up, uh, they offered the job to me uh, because I was a pilot and uh, a lot of extensive background in municipal government and public construction. So I felt like I was the right guy at the right time for what they wanted to get done. And so I came over here uh, not quite knowing exactly what I was getting into. Uh, my first day on the job I stopped the construction project because it was five to six million dollars over, over budget and it went from there. And then over the next two years uh, we were able to, two and a half years actually, we were able to get the funding, uh, the grants, and we were able to construct this new terminal, the new tower that you see behind me, and a new access road, which uh, was supposed to be a private driveway type thing, but has become a major thoroughfare. Uh, so it was a wonderful project, and I'm very proud of that. So, and now, I've been here for nine years. It's time to say goodbye, I think, and, take, and uh, get a few years of relaxation. So. And I'd like to thank everybody that's helped me and the airport uh, in this process. And there's too many people, too numerous to mention, but I do want to thank everybody for their wonderful support, me personally, and of the airport in particular. But I think the most fun of all the ones that we did here at the airport was probably the tower. Uh, never done a tower before. It's kind of unique and to just to learn the ins and outs and how that works with the FAA and the funding and the actual equipment and who owns the equipment and how it works and standing on the top of that thing while we were in the middle of construction was that was pretty fun. Well, as many people probably know the airport right now is suffering from some financial issues because of uh, loss of uh, employments and uh, that's, that's people departing the airport uh, to, to the high-speed ferries and we had a, one of our companies went bankrupt about three years ago now and we lost a lot of passengers and we'd love to get those back so we're encouraging anybody that wants to come to the airport to do fly passenger traffic either uh, air taxi service charter service or an airline so we have JetBlue that's coming in seasonal we'd love to see them extend that season to longer uh, come in more than once a day and or get some other airlines to come in and we're actively pursuing them and we'd really like to see them come back this airport is, uh, is very good and for the community, not only because of the services that we provide, but because of the economic impact. Uh, the last study that was done on the economics in 2011 and in 2014, it was reconfirmed, and they're, and they're doing another update of that economic impact study today. That's being done by the Massachusetts Aeronautics Division. In, uh, where it showed that the airport has an economic impact on the region of well over $200 million a year on the local economy and over 2,000 jobs associated with this airport. It's not just what the employees at the airport do that work for the town, it's what everybody else on the airport does and people who come in and do business here. And, you know, and it's ancillary thing. Cape Air, this is their national headquarters. They have at least 300 people right here at the airport, let alone the other employees. They have over 1,000 employees, I think, worldwide. This is their training facility, this is their maintenance facility, this is where they do all the ticketing. So this is a very important to bring in those people's economics, uh, their salaries uh, impact the whole community. So yes, we're having some financial problems at the airport. Uh, for the first time, second time now in two years, we've had to use our reserves to balance the budget. And uh, after, but if they had to go and uh, request a subsidy from the town, is it so bad that the town might have to kick in some money to be able to preserve that economic impact on the region? I think not. I think we're well worth the money. And we, I think you, the uh, people in the area should realize what a gem they have by having us here at the, uh, in this location. Uh, really, I want to relax, uh, which I haven't really done in 54 years uh, of uh, public service. And uh, I want to do some golfing. 
I want to do some exercising, get back in shape again, and uh, you know I want to get active in the community uh, from a private nature. Um, not too much, just enough to keep me busy. And uh, you know I don't want to sit and, and become a vegetable. I want to keep active because I've been so active all my life. I wouldn't know what to do if I just sat around and did nothing. You know. So I'm looking for something that's interesting. I've got a few people that are talking. I'm talking to right now uh, to keep me busy, and uh, we'll see where that goes. Congratulations. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. So I've worked with Bud in this capacity as assistant airport manager for three and a half years. Uh, Bud and I work very well together. We have a lot of the same thoughts and ideas on how to move the airport forward, how to um, look at other uh, potential revenue for the airport. And we really kind of were like frickin' frack in the way that we work together. Um, he's a fantastic mentor. His uh, dealings with um, different living on the Cape in general and his um, previous experience uh, working for the town of Barnstable, working for Truro as the town manager, really um, assisted in his knowing the community and being able to instill that knowledge to me, uh, towards me. So he's been a great help in getting uh, my feet wet at this airport and getting to know the community. I think really uh, one of the things that Bud has done is that uh, he has instilled in me the, um, uh, the ability to work in a town atmosphere and to understanding, know the strategic plan for the town and to work within that framework. So he has really imparted um, that knowledge and that ability to work uh, in a town framework as I'm working with town finances, as, as, as we are part of the town, the Barnstable Municipal Airport, uh, where an enterprise fund is part of the town, so we work hand in hand with the town. So that's been great experience to receive from Bud. Bud really had a lot to do with um, developing the airport in terms of its facilities. This terminal that was developed, the uh, FAA tower that was developed, um, working on different aspects of the airfield that had to, a lot to do with Bud and getting the funding that was needed for that. What my plan is moving forward is to really develop the airport from a business standpoint to look at ways that the airport can diversify their revenue stream um, with uh, their property leases that we have such as the Kmart parcel and the Kmart plaza that is um, operated by the airport. So looking at other types of revenue stream that not necessarily tied to aviation but other ways for the airport can and can make uh, revenue. Uh, additionally, we need to look at increasing our awareness for the community, what the airport can provide the community, what opportunity we have to potentially get more air carrier service at this airport so that our community is served from a transportation standpoint. Um, and additionally, one of the things that we really think is a top goal for the airport is to look at general aviation. And when I say general aviation, I mean corporate aviation that uses this facility as well as those small single engine pilots that um, house the aircraft here. It all starts with general aviation. If you want to become a pilot, it starts with those small single engine aircraft. If you want to fly for the airlines or for corporate um, aircraft, it's all starting with that, that smaller uh, single engine aircraft. We have lost a lot of pilots through the years. It's a nationwide um, issue that there is not an interest in aviation as there once was. So, so to bring that, um, that um, spark to get into aviation uh, at a younger age, to work with some of the educators here in the town of Barnstable, to get um, students and children really interested in aviation, to light that spark again. So one of our initiatives is to increase our general aviation awareness, general aviation education, and to increase use of this airport on a whole so that the community um, can come back to those principles of being excited about aviation, getting interested in science and mathematics, and applying that to the aviation industry. We brought Matt Ilya um, to the airport as our assistant airport manager. I think with Matt's past experience, we have a lot of um, what the airport is looking for. Matt is a commercial pilot. He has also served um, at a, as a manager for Mansfield Airport for many years. At Mansfield Airport, he had um, worked at a fixed base operation, which did all of the fueling on the airfield, flight instruction, 
maintenance of the airfield, snow removal, emergency response. So he really has a lot of the background experience that we were looking for. Additionally, he served also as the assistant airport manager at New Bedford Regional Airport um, for some time, and then he moved on uh, to an airport manager's position in Florida. However, Matt's heart is in New England. He wanted to move back here to this area when this job was posted. He applied for it along with 75 other applicants. Matt clearly rose to the top um, for our application pool. We had two rounds of interviews, and after those two rounds, Matt was the clear choice for the airport. Three polling places in the town of Barnstable will be on the move this year. And Ann Quirk, town clerk, has all the details of the town council approved sites. Are you in precinct 1, 10, or 12? Well, your polling places will be moving very shortly for this next election. With us today, town clerk Ann Quirk. Good morning. Good morning. So polling places are on the move. We've uh, got a, a good communication plan to get people to the right place. There's some new polling places for those three precincts. Uh, let's start with precinct one. Where was it and where's it going? The, this initiative came about because the school committee asked us to remove ourselves from the school locations. And in, a, uh, in an effort to, for the safety of the children, it's, it was a good idea. And so we've been searching and searching. But we did find a location to move the Precinct 1 from the BWB school to another location in Precinct 1, which is the Zion Union Church, located at 805 Attucks Lane in Hyannis. It is a huge church with a large lobby, and the lobby is where we would set up for the elections. Um, Rich French has been involved with this with us. Uh, Reverend Harris has been wonderful to work with. So it's one of those situations where not only are we taking care of the safety of the children, but we're also taking care of all the ADA compliance that we must have in order to move a precinct. Right. And I don't think people really realize that, you know, the disruption to a school uh, uh, for that entire day, and then it happens, especially you have primaries in September and then the election mm -hmm. in November. So moving this may be arduous, but there's a really good reason for it is to keep the kids safe. Um, mm -hmm. You know, there's cars in and out all day on those polling places. Mm -hmm. And then we talk a little bit about ADA uh, compliance. So that's precinct run. We'll come back to the ADA in just a second. But sure. 10 and 12 are also moving. Yes, they are. And that's a tough one because there's not a whole place, a lot of places in Marston's Mills that um, can hold the crowds of those two precincts. Yes, and that was the hardest part. That really was. I have enlisted the help of town councilors and anybody and any, everybody and asked them to help us out with this. And it turns out that the Seventh Day Adventist Church has a brand new community center and it's located on the grounds of the Seventh-day Adventist Church at, on Falmouth Road in Marston's Mills. And Marston's Mills is where 10 and 12 are, so it was a perfect location. It is a beautiful new building. It is completely separate from the church. And again, it's ADA compliant, and it is a great facility that can handle both precincts and plenty of parking. Okay, so you didn't have to split up the precincts because I'm from that precinct. I'm never quite sure if I'm 10 or 12 when I walk into the building, but I know they're both there. So uh, splitting those up <laughs> could be problematic for some of us millbillies. Yes, it could. <laughs> I'm, I'm one of those too, so I understand. Um, uh, there will be a detail out there. I know that would be a concern with folks is that that's a tough location in and out. Yes, it is. It, luckily, there is a side road. But the, uh, we, we are going to have a police detail for the full day of elections, both the primary and the um, actual election. Okay. So it's, it's just so people can get in and out with ease, because it is. It's right on 28. I, I get okay. it. 
Right. Um, so let's talk a little bit. So finding locations, um, obviously one to hold enough people for the polling machines and the workers and, and the people that come in to vote. But talk a little bit. We have a town expert for ADA, and you were out on site um, this week really looking for uh, compliance. Absolutely. It's, uh, we have our own um, ADA commission, and we also have a person on staff that is ADA compliant, is uh, the compliance officer. Um, she was out there with me. We have to make sure that the, the grade of the walkway is a certain height and, and it, it's a gentle grade, and there are specifics that I don't know, but she certainly does. And then you have to just, there's, there's several things. There's the parking spots. Do we have enough van parking areas? Do we have enough parking areas that have handicapped accessibility? Um, that's a huge thing, and, and for us, it's, this election, may not be as busy, but I know that we have another presidential coming up in two years, and mm -hmm. that provides us with plenty of space for people to park. The other part of this that people don't know is that we have to set up the day before, and we have to break down the day after. So we're really asking a lot of these folks that are being so wonderful to us to allow us to use their properties, mm -hmm. uh, you know, to get in and get out and clean it up and make sure everything's back to normal. Right. So Precinct 1 is going to, where were they originally? They were originally at the Barnstable, West Barnstable Elementary School and on 6A. And they're moving Sixth to? A. They're moving to uh, 805 Attics Lane, which is the Zion Union Church um, in Hyannis. Okay. And then the Precincts 10 and 12 in Marston's Mills are going from the Barnstable United, if I remember correctly. Correct over to the Seventh-day Adventist Church on Route 28. Correct. Okay. Into that community building that's right next to the church. Okay. And we'll have more uh, communication to make sure that everybody gets to the polling place that they need to get to. Yes. On the day of election, we will have people posted at the old locations to make sure we're sending you to the right location. We will be sending out postcards to all voters in all three precincts Okay. notifying them of the change and we hope to have it in the newspaper and we hope that this will run a few times so that people can be aware right excellent well thank you so much and this is important that everybody gets to the polling place and the right one yes and we keep our kids safe now too so we're, it, it, those were the last two schools that we had the last uh, two public polling schools places. yes mm -hmm. excellent well thank you so much for joining us thank you Here's a community calendar event for this evening, a conversation about conservation. The latest word on woodlands and water of Cape Cod tonight, June 26, 30 p.m. to 7.30 p.m. will be a thought-provoking and engaging interactive dialogue about land conservation and water quality with a distinguished panel of expert guests. Four regional authorities will take questions from the audience in this lively, moderated panel discussion that identifies environmental challenges and addresses ecosystem resiliency and sound conservation strategies. Refreshments will be served free to the public. Registration is appreciated. Call 508-362-6636. And the panel members include Z Crocker, Executive Director, Barnstable Clean Water Coalition, Heather McElroy, Natural Resource Specialist, Cape Cod Commission, Mark Robinson, Executive Director of the Compact of Cape Cod Conservation Trusts, and our own Daniel Santos, Director of Barnstable Department of Public Works. Comments, suggestions, accolades, connect with us on Facebook. Email us or send us an old-fashioned note by Carrier Pigeon. Channel 18 works for you. I'm Paula Hersey, and thank you for watching Barnstable today.